close to home with the parish. This beautiful devotional, which actually is sort of St. David's colors as well, was created by the Christian nonprofit, A Sanctified Art. And it maybe made it into your hands through the Advent mason jar candle packet, or in the Advent emails, or picked up in the narthex. And we do have a few copies left if anyone hasn't gotten one. Emily Given, the director of Christian Formation, and I chose it because of this theme close to home and the longing we heard in the parish to be close to one another, close to the church, close to God. And for the last three weeks, a group of us have gathered on Zoom using the Close to Home devotional together physically distanced, yet close to one another as we zoom in from our own homes. The scripture reading, art, poetry, and prayers have prompted much reflection on how church, our faith, and our community can be home for one another. Home. In the best sense of the term, this is a word that means safety, love, shelter, peace, an embodiment of the four Advent words of the Advent wreath, hope, peace, joy, and love, that place where you are known. And sometimes home is not a physical location, but a person or a community where you can be truly yourself. In our gospel reading today, we see these two prophets the older woman Elizabeth and a young woman Mary, live out the call of every Christ follower to proclaim the radical message that God makes a home with us. They teach us to offer sanctuary to one another and to welcome Jesus into our very selves, as our colleague says, to be a mansion for the Christ child. First, let's ponder God making a home with us. I was struck this week by the pageant preparations in the chapel, the building of a stable in the midst of the sanctuary. Right here, right now, the reminder of Emmanuel, God with us. I hope that we can all take a moment to sort of ponder this symbolic meaning of a stable being set up in the sanctuary. We've got sort of unfinished wood. There will be bales of hay. They're probably somewhere hiding. There'll be animals rubbing shoulders with shepherds and us. And in some church traditions, the word sanctuary stands for the entire worship space, the whole church or the whole chapel. In other church traditions, of which ours is a little bit closer in line, the sanctuary is just the area around the altar and is often separated, as you can see, with a little altar rail or a screen. We know that in the Jewish temple, the Holy of Holies was the sanctuary, where almost no one could enter because God's presence was so holy and awesome. And yet, right now, we look around, and we see this stable frame in the midst of the sanctuary, reminding us God is breaking in unexpectedly, in ways we cannot even imagine. The king of the universe, born not in a palace or Hollywood or the Hamptons, but in this lowly stable. God is close and draws us close to God. And we see in Elizabeth and Mary how they recognize and praise God's inbreaking into their ordinary lives pushing in through the Holy Spirit into their very beings. And these two women are the first prophetic voices to speak in hundreds of years this prophetic reality of God coming close to humanity, bringing to light the promises we just heard in Micah and the other prophets. And of course, we know that God has always dwelled among the people. But Mary and Elizabeth's welcome of God is a new perspective on sanctuary. The word sanctuary is from the Latin, a combination of the words holy, that's the sancta, 
And then um, container is the other part of that word. I preached last year, and frequently, about Mary as a container of the uncontainable God. And that concept continues to inspire me throughout the year. Mary and us as a sanctuary for Emmanuel, God with us. It's a very big and cosmic symbol. But this year I'm thinking much more about the concepts of the close, the intimate, the warmth of home and sanctuary, the stable in, the, in our midst. While sanctuary is both this very religious term of the container of the holy, it also offers us connotations of protection, shelter, safety. Throughout many cultures, from ancient Hawaii to North Africa to ancient Israel, there were sanctuary cities or temples, places that were set up for fugitives, criminals, enslaved people running to freedom, and that people could go to these and know that they were safe. We still need this idea of sanctuary today, with immigrants seeking asylum or teens coming out as LGBTQ and needing places of safe space. We hope and we pray that we can work out our faith so that we too can be like Elizabeth and Mary, who are sanctuary for those who show up at our door, our church, our community. Mary and Elizabeth offered this model of what it means to be home and sanctuary to others. Elizabeth opened her door when God knocked, when Mary knocked, and when God knocked, welcomed her into her home for shelter, safety, love, and sanctuary. Each of these women confirmed and encouraged the other in the midst of this moment of revelation, uncertainty, transformation. And Elizabeth was able to offer this radical hospitality because she had been filled by the Holy Spirit. Her faith in God's faithfulness had enabled her to be radically open to sharing that transformation. And finally, today, we ponder Mary's model of welcoming Jesus into our very selves to be a mansion for the Christ child. In the Close to Home devotional, Presbyterian elder Ville-Marie Sintron Oliveria writes, that Mary herself was a sanctuary in Jesus' first home. Mary opened herself to allowing God to come into her, this radical hope that Gabriel's message was real. And we know that Christ came into the world through Mary's womb. She provided that home for God and herself and models that for each one of us. I think we see this model, too, in the very Christmas pageant that will happen later today, where members of our congregation, well, we will envision ourselves as shepherds or magi, angels or innkeepers, children of the world bringing gifts to the baby. And I also especially like the Mexican tradition of Las Posadas which is another way to bring these symbols of Jesus coming home to us to life. And Las Posadas, which can go on in some communities for nine whole nights in a row, it's a version of a Christmas pageant in procession, where Mary, Jesus, and others go around knocking on doors, asking for to be welcomed in, so there is a sanctuary for Jesus to be born. Door after door, night after night, the door is not answered. Or people dressed up as devils scare the holy family away. Or the door answerers give excuses as to why the holy family cannot be welcomed in. Finally, on Christmas Eve, the last door is opened and everyone rushes in. Jesus can finally be born in our midst. And our invitation today on the fourth Sunday of Advent is just the same. Will we welcome Jesus into ourselves? Will we follow in Mary and Elizabeth's example to open our lives and our hearts to the inbreaking of holy God into our very being? 
How might we offer sanctuary to another who's in need of hope, peace, joy, or love? Perhaps that's a family member or a friend who needs an open door and a listening ear. Perhaps it's a stranger, the person who has not yet connected with God, yet is so longing for meaning. Or refugees who are seeking asylum and safety. Might we see God this week breaking in among the sheep and the poor shepherds, in this stable, in the midst of our sanctuary. We pray with expectation, come Lord Jesus, welcome home.